Hi, I'm Ryan Holger with TEC Tube, and we're going to continue our series on the Heil and day and night calculators for energy efficiency on residential equipment. Um, they're both the same, so I'm just going to do the Heil one today as an example, but the day and night one will work exactly the same way. We did AC and gas furnaces last time we were with you, so today we're going to do heat pumps. We'll do both standard heat pumps and we'll do dual fuel heat pump systems. Let's go ahead and get started. So I'm going to go to goheil.com as my starting point. Right. And then I'm going to go to the menu, product info. I'm going to scroll down to HVAC equipment cost operation. And then from here, I can either log in or I can proceed without login. The reason to log in would be that it would save my information, like my company name and that kind of stuff that it prints on the report later. But for today, I'm just going to go proceed without login. Uh, I'm going to do a standard heat pump first. We'll look at that. Fahrenheit, obviously. My electricity cost, I'm going to use 15 cents. Um, normally around here in the Chicagoland area, you're paying like seven, eight cents a kilowatt hour. But once you average in everything, taxes, fees, delivery costs and all that, it ends up being more. So me at home personally, mine's about 15 cents. So I'm going to use that. You'll tell it the heat load that you have for this project. So however many BTUs you need, if it's, you know, 40,000, if it's a hundred thousand, whatever it is, uh, today I'm going to do, let's say 55. And then you tell it your geography so it can pull the weather data in. Mine's already defaulted to the last time I did it, which was Illinois. And I picked Chicago, which is the closest uh, airport to me here in Aurora today. So it tells me the region I'm in, my design temp, which is one degree around here, my heating degree days, my, and my uh, cooling hours too, if I needed it. Homeowner information, you can put whatever you want in there for the homeowner, right? So this could be uh, Bob's house, and he could live at 123 Main Street. You know, his phone number is whatever. Put it whatever you want to show up on the report there. If I want to set up my information on there, I can go to logo and company name setup. And then from there, I can type whatever I want my company name to be. In this case, obviously it's going to be TEC tube. What else would it be? And I could also grab a logo if I want. So if I go to my pictures, uh, logos, TEC, and I can grab a TEC tube one, right? And I could throw that on there and then upload it and it'll show up on my report later. Right, back to my main menu. So next step would be to select the units you wanna do. So there's my information I had previously put in. I'm selecting my units. So uh, I can pick whatever model numbers that I wanna pick on here. Oh, I'm on dual fuel. I'm sorry, folks. Heat pump. Now select units. All right, so I can pick whatever unit I want. I'm gonna do the first one as just a generic 14 sear, 8.5 HSPF heat pump click calculate and show you what that looks like. So it tells me that the unit that I picked, in this case it was a generic one, not a specific mile number, the capacity that I'm gonna have for cooling, capacity for heating at 47 degrees, capacity of heating for 17 degrees outdoors. Every heat pump from every manufacturer is rated at 14 degrees outdoor and 17 degrees outdoor. It can still run lower than 17. Obviously the BTUs will continue to drop off. We'll look at that in a second. My SEER and HSPF, how much it's going to cost me to heat the house, how much it's going to cost me to cool the house. And then in this case, the total is $2,000 to heat and cool it. I look over here at the thermal balance point. Thermal balance point is when this model of heat pump can no longer produce enough BTUs to heat my house. So for this house, I said I had a 55,000 BT load. And if I look over here on the graph, it's kind of a nice way to look at it. In red here is my heat load for this particular house, right? And then in blue is what my heat pump can actually deliver to me on its own. So I had a one degree design day for where I live here. So I need, and I needed 55,000 BTUs on a one degree day. So that's right there. That little dot right there is where he would be if you can see my mouse, right? And then this is how much, as it gets warmer outside, I need less and less heat. But as it gets colder outside, the heat pumps makes less. So at about 39 degrees in this case is my thermal balance point. Specifically, it's right here, 39.2. So when it's below 39 degrees, this heat pump will not be able to heat the house by itself. When it's above 39, it can do it solo. So below 39, electric resistance heat would have to come on to help them out. Let's take a different example here. Instead of that generic 14 seer, let's pick a specific model. For argument's sake, we'll just grab the very first one right here. All right, we'll say calculate. So in this case, it's cost me a little bit less to operate because I'm going from a 14 seer up to a 15.5 seer, a little more efficient unit. It's only costing me $1,700 instead of $2,000. It's almost, almost $300 in savings. 
And when I scroll down here, my balance point is pretty similar, 41.8 or 41.3 degrees in this case. I could still look at that on the graph, but I'm a little bit more efficient in there. And I have all kinds of options available to me. I have a drop down of just tons and tons and tons of different indoor units I can pick, or excuse me, outdoor units I can pick, and I can combine them with different indoor coils. All right, so even this exact same one, I can put a different coil on that guy, and then I can get a different answer out of this. Hit calculate, and I get a different, slightly different answer. If I want to do dual fuel, right, so in this case, I'm going to go back, open my calculator again, show you guys a dual fuel example. Proceed without logging in my case. Dual fuel, I'm going to go natural gas as my dual fuel, although I might do propane in some applications. I'm going to stick with my same 15 cents electric and put whatever your gas, gas cost is. So I'm going to say 80 cents a therm in my case. Once again, gas, taxes, fees, everything rolled into one big giant price. It remembers all my utility data, select units. Now I need to pick a heat pump and I have to pick a gas furnace in this case. So let's do that. I'll just pick any heat pump for right now. Let's pick like a three ton, three ton coil. I'll pick a 90 some percent, let's say a 95% efficient furnace. And we'll go with the 60, hit calculate. So now I got a little bit different screen to look at here. So I have the heat pump operating cost, the furnace operating cost at certain outdoor air temperatures and the heat pump efficiency. Now the furnace efficiency is not listed there. It doesn't change. In this case, it's 95%, no matter what the weather is outside. And it's going to cost me $6.54, no matter what the weather is outside. But the heat pump, as you can see, is going to cost me different amounts as the outdoor air temperature changes, right? So in this case, because of the fuel costs, even on a 70 degree day, the heat pump is going to cost me more to operate than this gas furnace. But if I was to pick a less efficient furnace, let's go with an 80% furnace, hit calculate, right? Heat pump still costing me more. So I'd have to have an 80% furnace and an unattractive fuel cost. Let's go back to the fuel cost. Uh, back. So let's say my gas cost was more expensive. And let's say my electric was less, depending on where you're at, where you live. Select my units. I'll pick the same one for right now. Let's say it's, uh, I picked the three ton, didn't I? Three ton. Pick that with an 80% furnace for right now. I'll keep that default coil. That's a uh, three ton. It's a five ton. So now you can see when I have a different fuel cost situation, a little bit cheaper electric, a little bit more gas, then the math flip flops. So it's costing me 10 bucks to heat with the furnace, but with the heat pump, it's costing me seven, eight, 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 nine, ten. 10. So somewhere right around here is when that flips. Somewhere in the high 40s, it would be less expensive to heat with the furnace. So in that case, at someone's house, I'm gonna wanna run the heat pump when it's 50, 55, 60 degrees outside for heat. And when it's colder than 50, I'm gonna put the gas furnace on. And that'll keep changing depending on the models that you pick, the efficiencies that you have, and the efficiencies of the equipment as well. You can look at it graphically. Yellow is the furnace, blue is the heat pump operating cost, and you can see that point where they crisscross. And the more extreme you make that difference, if I say you got really cheap gas, or really cheap electric, let's say it's, uh, you know, 0.07 cents, right? And you got a buck 20 for gas, or if I even say you got propane, let's say you're paying, you know, 260 for propane, do the math, select my units, I'll pick another three ton, same one I had been picking, combine it with an 80% furnace. And you can see over here, this is the gas comp, 25 bucks for propane. Here's the heat pump. Heat pump is cheaper all the way through in this example. It makes sense all the way through. So it just kind of depends on, you know, what, what the fuel costs are and what you're looking at. Let's go back to that guy. Three ton. All right, so I got this situation here where the gas is more efficient sometimes, electric is other times. I can see where those guys happen to cross. And I can also see my thermal balance point, All right? So this cost comparison really tells me my economic balance point. One, I wanna shut the heat pump off and turn the gas furnace on based on economics. And down here, it's based on thermal. So at 34 degrees, 34.2 exactly, below that, the heat pump can't carry it by itself. So I gotta switch to gas furnace when it's below 34 in this application. 
Dollar wise, I wouldn't have switched to gas furnace until I got to two or three degrees outside. But I'm gonna have to do it at the thermal. So for your heat pump, you're gonna set it to change over at the lower, or at the, rather the higher of the thermal or the economic balance point. If you're interested in the same kind of calculations for furnaces or straight air conditioners, cooling only, we have another video to help you guys out with that. So hopefully you guys find this useful and we'll talk to you next time.